Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today, we're taking a look at this knife here. This is the Artisan Cutlery Sea Snake designed by Mike Emler. Uh, this is a knife that's been out for a while. It was pretty popular when it came out. This is this summer was the first time I got a hold of it, and holy cow, I wish I had got one sooner. Um, yeah, I like this thing quite a bit. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into this review. Let's start off with our blade length measurement. Sharpened edge is coming in here at like almost two and three quarters. Um, if we measure the blade length all the way back to here, we're like three and a quarter inches. Uh, very, very small fixed blade. In fact, I bet, I mean, yeah, it's just a little bit over six inches overall. Um, size comparisons. I guess let's just do all of them. Uh, let's start off with our uh, rats. There's the one. And here's good old R2-D2. Very, very small knife, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a tiny guy. Um, let's go ahead and bring out our Civivis. Here's the Elementum. And there's the Praxis. Yeah, tiny knife. And actually, I mean, do we really need to do the rest of the comparisons? I guess we will since we've come this far. You know, might as well finish the job. Uh, here is the PM2. And there's the bug out. Cool. This is a knife that I, I probably could have reviewed a long time ago. I've just been so busy. I haven't had a chance to sit down um, and review anything. Uh, but I've carried this knife pretty much non-stop since I got it. I love this knife. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, so AR RPM9, Warncliffe blade, G10 handles, and a Kydex sheath. Let's go ahead and get to the cutting footage. Hey everybody, are you ready to talk about the Artisan Cutlery Sea Snake? Because I sure am. Um, let's go ahead, get right into this because I am loving this knife. I'm in love with this knife. Um, this is normally the part of the video where I'd say, all right, let's talk about the carry. However, I am a supreme idiot, and in my supreme stupidity, I ruined the sheath for this knife. Um, I'll talk about that at the table. Uh, I'm working on making a new one, but anyways. In the meantime, I thankfully took this video that I'm going to play now. I'm a fan of neck knives. I really am. I've carried neck knives a lot in the past. However, I have not been carrying the Artisan Cutlery Sea Snake as a neck knife. I've been carrying it just like this here in my pocket and pulling it like this, doing that, getting it out and ready to use. Um, maybe a little bit unconventional. You know, maybe it'd be easier for, for me to have it on my neck. Focus up, camera. Don't. Why do you want to focus on the damn hay on the ground? <laughs> anyway, oh, there we go. There's a good shot. Um, but yeah, that's been working out best for me. Uh, kind of a pocket knife replacement. I did try carrying it in the right pocket a little bit uh, instead of a pocket knife in that pocket, but I just found that it works better in the left. And uh, the camera does not want to focus at all. There we go. Kind of a cool looking little knife. I really do enjoy the way it looks. There we go, camera. Something else for you to focus on. Anyways, Arson Cutlery Sea Snake. <laughs> Alrighty, so there we go. Yeah, the sheath that this came with was great. It was only neck carry, um, which I thought was okay, but I carried this mostly in my pocket. So, yeah, carry was fine. How are the ergonomics? Very, very good. The scales here are rounded really nicely. If you're back here, it fits the hand well. You have a very generous choil that you can choke up into. And uh, the jimping up here is actually really, really nicely textured. So I love that. All right, let's go ahead and do some cutting. I recently bought a new shotgun. So we've got plenty of cardboard to work with here. Uh, let's go ahead and start breaking this down. I 
<laughs> it's a lot of cardboard to work with. Excellent utility cuts, as you would probably imagine. All right, that's all we're gonna do with that for now. AR RPM9 steel, flat grind, worn cliff blade, very thin behind the edge. This is a beautiful, beautiful blade. One of the first thoughts I had when I unboxed the Sea Snake was, ooh, look at that thin, thin tip. That is going to make short work of blister packs. And so I knew that I was gonna have to run off and buy something in a blister pack and tear into it with this. So I did. Yep, because I'm a nerd. It's been a while since I've displayed anything Star Wars on the set, so you know what? We're gonna get into that again. And no, I'm not one of those collectors that cares about packaging. <laughs> See if I can do this one-handed. Whoops. <laughs> you know what, we'll set it up. Well, what do you know? Having a tripod is helpful for things like this. <laughs> Who would have guessed, right? Oh man, yep, yep, yep. Went a little bit screwy on this side. Not exactly blister pack, but close enough, right? Throw that away. Oh, I gotta get the base out of there. <laughs> Tie interceptor. That's nice. It's my favorite Star Wars ship. Imperial stuff always just looks so cool to me. I know they're the bad guys, but. Damn it, they had some cool ships. X-Wings are nice too, but yeah, this is my favorite. This is my favorite Starfighter. It's a nice big model too. It's gonna look nice on the set. If I decide to put it there. But yeah, very nice acute tip. Great for poking into plastic and stuff. I mean, look at that. It's just it's an incredibly narrow and stabby tip. Very, very useful. Just a fantastically useful knife all the way around, like in every way. Uh, I've been carrying this pretty much nonstop since I got it, and uh, I don't see that uh, stopping anytime soon. I, yeah, I, I like it that much. Fantastic. Good sheath retention, too. So, there we go. Alrighty, let's do some rope cutting. Got a goat here. Also, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's a storm coming in, so I'm trying to get this done quick. All right, very, very good on the push or on the pull. Excellent geometry. Now, because this is a pretty straight edge, I had to get on the edge of the board. If we just did here, you know, you can't really do anything, but that's the nature of worn cliffs. All righty, pull noodle time. All right, so we don't have a whole lot of blade to work with here, so we gotta be careful. <laughs> well, the rain has hit. Um, I got caught in the choil there, but this thin blade acted just like a scalpel. It just went right through it. Alrighty, here's the rain. Let's go ahead and get back to the table. Alrighty, we are back. Let's talk about what I'm liking and not liking about this knife. Number one, I think this is a perfect size. Uh, this is a great EDC fixed blade. This is a great neck knife. Uh, the size is very, very nice. Uh, it's very slim. It's lightweight. It's not, I mean, it's pretty slender in all dimensions. It's just great size for carry. I think a lot of people are going to like that. 
Um, next thing, the ergonomics are fantastic. Back here, you can hold on really, really well. Uh, the jimping up here is very, very nice. Focus up here. Like that jimping a whole lot, very, very grabby. Very, very generous finger choil. You can get a whole lot of control over that tip. Speaking of that tip, this blade is fantastic. AR RPM9 steel is a steel I love. The satin finish on here with the stonewash flats looks beautiful. Well, it looks beautiful. Mine's kind of scratched up now, but uh, very, very beautiful. Um, this Warncliffe shape, I'm not the biggest fan of Warncliffe's, right? I mean, I like some Warncliffe's, but this is not my go-to. This is one of the most useful blades I've ever held. This is, oh my gosh, get to that tip very easily. This edge cants up just a little bit. I mean, if we look at this, let's get a, let's get a ruler out here. You can see that we are not perfectly straight. Got a little bit of rock there. I found that was really nice when you're doing long slicing cuts. The blade stock is very thin, full flat grind. It's just, there's so much good going on here with this blade. And all the things we've talked about right now come together to make a knife that's just supremely EDCable. Um, the sheath is very nice. It's a Kydex sheath. Snaps um, in and out very, very nicely. They only give you a neck, a, a neck knife attachment, but the sheath does have holes that you can maybe rig some other stuff up with. Um, here's the sheath right now. Uh, if you want to know how this happened, as you might notice, I dyed these scales. This used to be the tan um, version. I dyed these scales. I think it's a really, really nice color. And while I was doing that, I was like, you know what? Let's just throw the Kydex sheath in the boiling water as well. And I did that. And a couple seconds later, I was like, wait a second. Kydex is molded with heat. And I pulled it out. And even that, you know, a few seconds in there was too late. I've been trying to re reform it, but it hasn't been going very well. Yeah, I'm just a big dum-dum. <laughs> I'm an idiot. So that, that that's completely on me. But uh, I am making a new sheath for this out of leather. I think that'll be pretty cool. Next thing I like about this knife is the price. These are under $40. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. This is this is an amazing knife. Tomorrow you're going to be seeing a video come out where uh, I talk about my favorite EDC knives under 50 bucks. I made that video only folding knives. If I'd included fixed blades, this would have been on there. This absolutely would have been on there. This is a phenomenal deal. Uh, this, gosh, it feels so solid. It works like a champ. This is an absolutely... Absolutely fantastic knife. I'm I'm in love. It's it's perfect. It, it's, it's kind of almost perfect. There's a couple of complaints, which let's go ahead and get into those complaints right now. My number one complaint is that these screws are free spinning. So taking this knife, like taking the scales off, is a little bit difficult. But I mean, it's a fixed blade. You're not going to need to do that super often. So uh, that wasn't wasn't a huge deal. Next thing, I do kind of wish they give you more sheath carry options, maybe a pocket clip. I think a pocket clip sheath with this knife would have been fantastic. They don't give you any options like that though, which is kind of a shame. Um, I wish they would. And that's it. That's, that's it. Those are my only complaints. I mean, let's go on to my final conclusions. This is going to be a short review. Guys, this thing is fantastic. This is an amazing knife. If you don't have one of these, get one. This is such an easy knife. Throw in your toolbox, throw in your truck, just carry it with you all the time. This is so useful for so many applications. I was using this all the time. I am going to continue to use this all the time. You can do very fine detail work. You can do very, you know, some harder tasks because it's a fixed blade rather than a folder. It's perfect. I, I did not know that I would love EDC fixed blades this much, but lo and behold, I do. I am so glad I gave this knife a shot. It is one of my favorite knives ever. I, I, I can say that with 100% certainty. This is one of the best knives I've ever carried and used. And I'm so glad that I gave it a shot because, yeah, my life was missing this. But that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this knife. Um, I'd be curious to know if you guys have one of these and what you think. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.